Also, a judge rules Nakira Greiner is fit to stand trial in Bridgeton, New Jersey. Today, Greiner was arraigned on charges that she killed her 23-month-old son, Daniel Greiner Jr., back in February. She pleaded not guilty to this. Greiner told investigators that she struck the boy because he wouldn't eat or listen. His charred remains were found buried under a shed behind Greiner's house. Greiner's lawyer says that she was suffering from postpartum depression. and welcome back to the channel. Today, I have another story, and this story is about a little boy named Daniel Grinder Jr., 24-month-year-old. You guys, this story is heartbreaking. Daniel Loved Ones described him as a loving, caring little boy. He loved to play, he loved to eat Cheetos, and he loved to play and run around with his mother and father. Daniel had a big heart and he was so bright to be 24 months. Daniel was born to Nakira and Daniel Sr. Grinder. Daniel Jr. will be unalive by his very own mother, Nakira Grinder. At the time, she was age 24 years old. Nakira Grinder lived with her husband and two children in Bridgeton, New Jersey, Cumberland County. Now, Kira and her husband were loving, caring, and they were good parents to everybody on the outside. Little did they know that the Grinder family had a deep, dark secret, and it all would come to light February 8th, 2019. Now, now Kira called to the police frantically, upset, angry, and trying to basically get help. This is exactly how the phone call went to dispatchers. Emergency. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, this is now one. What's going on there? <laughs> What's the address? What is the address? Are you at a house? Are you in the street? What? You're hiding? Okay. Are you in a house or are you on the street? And you're on the street? What's your name? I need you to... Uh, listen, listen. Ma'am. Ma'am, I need you to try to slow down, okay? What is your name? Okay, listen, I, I'm really trying to understand you, but it's really difficult while you're crying. Try to take a deep breath, slow your breathing down, and tell me what's going on so I can help you. You're walking to the store? What's the name of the store? Walgreens? Alright, where do you know where you're at right now? Can you describe what you see around you? I was running, I was running. Who are you running from? Someone pushed me out of the all right, where are you right now? What do you see around you? Do you see a house number? You're in where? The bushes of where? Are you, are you on Giles Street, do you know? Do you need an ambulance? Were you jumped? I had a baby push me on the ground. Alright, okay. Your baby's injured as well? I fell on top of him. You fell on top of him? How old is he? I'm a whole lady. Do you see the police? Yes. Okay, we're going to start an ambulance over there as well, okay? And how old is your son? Now, as the authorities show up, Nakira was still frantic, she was crying, and she was just looking like a concerned mother and scared for her children. Nakira wound up allowing them to check her baby that was in the pouch and they start asking her questions about Daniel Jr. She stated that the people, the perpetrators, ran off at the punching, kicking her and beating her. They took her 24-month-year-old son and left. Now, detectives and police were still questioning her because, of course, they wanted to find Daniel Jr. 
Once they got her into the police station, they started questioning her and she was giving the same story. They start rearranging the questions. It was like the same questions, but in a different way. Basically to see was Nakira going to tell the same exact story because something wasn't adding up. Now, once they question her and everything, she goes to say, why are y'all like questioning me? My story is not going to change. She gives a story of she wanted to take a walk with her children and was just walking down the street. Then a huge turn. You know how law enforcement and stuff start begging you to help them out, help them find your child. They start giving her them lines. Eventually, her husband comes into the police station also where they question him. But Nakira, her story just wasn't adding up. Detectives and stuff start pulling cameras and everything. Nothing that Nakira was telling them. They saw Nakira, but not Daniel Jr. in the stroller. And they did not see anybody ever following Nakira, beating her, or anything to that extent. They started questioning neighbors and people around just to see if they had any type of visual or heard anything, but no one saw anything. Now, detectives start asking Nakira, was it okay if she take a lie detector test? And at first she was iffy. She was like, no, why y'all want to take a lie detector test? My story not going to change. Somebody got my child. Please go and find my child. Now, any parent would say that, right? But it was something about the way Nakira did it. And if you really wanted your child to be found, why not go in and take the lie detector test just to rule you out as a suspect or just help police? And that's what the detectives was trying to explain to her. We just want to know everything, all possibilities. And we want to stop looking at possibilities and look at exactly what we need to because we're trying to help you and we're trying to find Daniel Jr. So after Nakira spoke with her husband, she wound up agreeing to detectives to take this lie detector test, which she failed badly. Now, even though Nakira failed, she was still being questioned by detectives. Meanwhile, detectives and her husband goes to their house. Now, unbelievable, the detectives find a shocking situation. Not only did Nakira house reveal something so tragic, it became a crime scene. Detectives go in and start looking and searching they find that the windows are wide open in the house and a excruciating burning smell is all over the house, like a terrible incident, something that burnt really bad. Now they go into the kitchen and they go all around the house. They go outside and they find out that Daniel was outside near the shed and that Daniel was badly burnt, so bad, and dismembered. I mean, some of his body parts was found in a purse, and that purse had a shoe print on it, the same Ugg shoe print that Nakira had, and the dirt stains were matching that um, the type of dirt that was on Nakira's pants. Oh my God, she had done, killed her son, dismember her son, burned her son, and tried to get rid of all the body parts so no one could tell that she killed her child. No one never took Daniel Jr. His own mother tragically killed him, dismember him, and burnt his body. Now, Nakira lawyer tried to argue when she went to court that she had some type of postpartum after having her babies. But Daniel Jr. was 24 months 
And although that doesn't give a time limit because it can happen at any time, girl, please come up with something else. Just face the fact that you are cold blood murderer and you killed your own son. Now, they took Daniel Jr. for a autopsy, shockingly finding out that Daniel Jr. had bone fractures and he also had blood force trauma. It was like he was being abused day after day. So this was not an accident. Now, when detectives start questioning and getting down to the bottom of it, what Nakira? Nakira gave all types of different stories. One of her stories was she accidentally hit him too hard and she he had bruises and she was trying to cover up the bruises. Another one was he accidentally fell down the steps to the point where she start telling the complete truth, giving situations where she had beat Daniel Jr. because he wouldn't eat his food or he wouldn't listen to her. Now, in court, she also stated that her husband hit Daniel Jr. too. Now, Daniel Sr. confessed to beating him days before his murder because he would not eat his food. But other than that, this was all Nakira. So at this time, her court dates were starting to be prolonged and postponed because they wanted the most evidence so they can put Nakira away. This was a devastating situation around her community, her friends and family, and family members spoke out and friends. They were shocked. They said that Nakira was not like this and they didn't want the public to look at her as a monster. Hearing this, as soon as I seen, like it went on my Facebook, that's the first, th first thing I saw. The first thing I saw and I started pacing back and forth, wishing it's not true, wishing it's not true. I just don't want people to look at her as being evil because she's not like that. Neighbors were also shocked to hear why police and search dogs combed through their neighborhood. Sad. Like, we was very shocked. I have two boys of my own, and I can't imagine something like that happening or a mother doing that to her own child. It's very sad and disturbing at the same time. Now, Griner is behind bars at the Cumberland County Jail. She also faces child endangerment and evidence tampering charges. She's scheduled to appear in court tomorrow. Live in Bridgeton, Crystal Cranmore, CBS3 Eyewitness News. All right, Crystal, thank you. But how could we not? She literally killed, beat, dismembered, and tried to cook her child to get rid of evidence, placing different body parts all over the house and in the back of the house by the shed. Devastating, evil, and ugly. So, after years of this case being prolonged, now Nakira would face trial, finally, at the age of 28 years old, Nakira Grinder was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, relieving everybody that was angry, confused, devastated, and sad for this family that truly loved Daniel Jr. I mean, this was a devastating and tragic situation. And I feel like Nakira had so many opportunities to go get help. She saw this and she should have been a mother and properly got herself situated and seen about before she took them type of dramatic measurements against her own flesh and blood. You guys, this is so sad. So let's take time to pray for this family that is still hurting from this tragic situation, especially the case kept being prolonged. And finally, Nakira Grinda had her day in court, and now we all see her for what she really was, a mother murdering monster. Thanks for watching, you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and definitely subscribe. And thanks for the likes, comments, shares, and you hitting that subscribe button. Peace.